showed up. I'm not really sure. Uh, you know, I was offered to come have a drink, and then it turned into a fight, and trying to get guys off me and my brother, and that's the way it is. No hard feelings on my end. It turned into a fight. Yeah, it did. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't swinging. There's too many guys. There's also an allegation, and maybe even some pictures, that you took a pee, a urination, in the street in front of a number of people. No, I think I was behind a tent, possibly. I don't know. Let me see a picture. I don't I don't think so. It's no reason to get your head stomped. But, like I said. So, so there was public urination? I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. You don't remember? No. I don't remember until I'm taking a leak, you know what I mean? But, no, I don't think I'm standing in the street doing that. I think I'm behind a tent. A little urination, maybe, Ira. A little pee. No bullshit. You know what was happening? That very moment, that dude, that reporter stuck his microphone in my face. Do you know what was happening right at that moment? No bullshit. The jury broke for lunch, and they were coming back to give... The verdict on Kwame Kilpatrick. Oh, wow. Biggest news in Detroit in 20 years. And dude's coming to me like maybe a Pete or urinate a little bit. <laughs> maybe there in uh, Patty's name. A urinate. A, a urination? Bill Proctor, he, he get deep into it. Though. I guess. No, no fucking photo ever showed up because it wasn't true. Okay. I'm going to tell you about it. I want you to keep that in mind as we get into the program today. Now I'll talk about it a little bit. Because there's big urination news locally in Michigan, right? The Red Wings fire uh, the Zamboni driver of 51 years for pissing into an ice drain. Al Sabatka. Somebody ratted him out. What the fuck is going on with, this, with this girly man society we're living in? <laughs> fuck it. The mayor, the mayor just going to federal prison and maybe I urinated a little bit. <laughs> Which he wasn't even true. I'll let you know about that. That's how he retired with us. This How you doing? I retired. Probably the top interrogator in the Detroit Police Department since maybe Prohibition. Oh. You got a reputation, bro. I appreciate it. Retired. It's important to say. I retired is the only police officer I know in the United States who was charged and acquitted for a homicide murder as a cop for shooting an unarmed citizen. The only man I know in the United States willing to actually talk. It's a real honor. Thank you. You know, I mean, that's hard. And Appreciate we're actually friends and this is no bullshit news hour and I have to let people know that. Yes. Right? But we're going to look at what happened in Grand Rapids. As always with us is Karen Dumas, the queen of the scene. Best in the West. Got breaking news. East, East Ira, East. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so keep all that in mind. We will come back to that urination video. Um, also, we are going to give you the news locally. The peeing, everything behind the peeing scandal. The Red Wing Stadium. Statewide, the culture wars between the Democrats and the Republicans and transgender rights and hates and everybody gets to score their points on stuff none of us are talking about. Nationally, sad news from the border, which is out of control. It is. Stop it. Everybody knows it is. We're going to bring you a little news. And finally, our man from Hamtramck, yeah. Taras Petros, is taking our advice and he's out there with... with exclusive images on the scene from the Russian shelling of Lviv. In Ukraine, yeah. Yep, that, that thing's still going on. So we're, we're nationwide. Everything we think you want to know in a consumable and interesting way. Right? Carol, I got breaking news here. <clears throat> Karen Dumas, the queen of the Detroit scene, 
The woman whose phone is so red hot that when her car got broken into and it was stolen and they saw what was in it, they took it right to the th- 12th precinct and said, I don't want to touch this shit. <laughs> She got juice. Oh, my she God. She got a lot of juice. She got juice. Karen Dumas now will be a weekly op-ed columnist for the Detroit News. Hey. Congratulations. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Indeed. It's great. Yeah. Indeed. Good game recognized game. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I got breaking news. What? More? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Charlie what? LaDuff will now accept a position with the Detroit News as an op-ed columnist. Uh-oh. What? Thank you. Congratulations. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> Do you know, ladies and gentlemen, that's the thing. Stay together. Stay with us. Stay reasonable. You don't I always have to agree. But the No Bullshit News Hour and the community that surrounds it is mainstream. I have breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> I will still be in this basement. I will lower not. Lower level, Mark. Actually, I guess lower not, level. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> I will not be writing for anybody ever. <laughs> I've got more breaking news. What? More? <laughs> Retired homicide investigator, cop, and interrogator Ira Todd <laughs> has just signed a memorandum of inter- uh, understanding with HBO Films, wow. and he'll be flying out to LA now to consult on a, a latest project. Is this correct? Which we're going to keep very secret right now. Yes. That's correct. great. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy about it, too. All this from a dump ass basement. Hey. <laughs> Lower level. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we get in, we, we, we want to look from a professional eye, from a guy that's lived the torture of this Ira, Ira Craig, my grand rev. But before you do that, <laughs> the monologue, the rant for this week, I, I'm sorry it came to me. Earlier in the week, I can't let it go because it addresses the aching, the pain, and the misguided misdirection that you're being led, American man. Eh? Mm Mm-hmm. America is on the decline, and in order to save the country from disorder, men must bathe their balls in a red laser beam. (laughs) What? No, no, no. This according to the trailer of Tucker Carlson's latest pop culture prophylactic, The End of Men. The Fox News host, friend of mine, Mm -hmm. takes a deep dive into the plummeting levels of testosterone in the United States. It's true. You can look it up. He realizes that this phenomenon may be the reason we become a declining country of girly men. Carlson's homoerotic teaser reel features shirtless men wrestling, shirtless men firing guns, and a shirtless man splitting wood with a double-sided axe. A double-sided wow, axe! that's manly. Looked like the Tin Man with no shirt on. It was unbelievable. <laughs> now, the piece de resistance of this reel has to be the naked man standing poolside, baking his junk in what appears to be an ultraviolet light machine. I mean, it's a veritable penis to Milo. <laughs> Roll the tape. No. Way to go. This is great. Wait. <laughs> Rocket. <laughs> this is a spoof. This is a spoof. <laughs> this is great. The, the, the images are real. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, here it is. <laughs> macho, macho, man. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> He's got the light right on his junk. What is that? There's a guy flipping a tire. Okay. They're all white guys, it should be. Looks like an Amicrami and Fitch ad. Look at that, that double-sided ad. <laughs> and you'll notice, like, the, the shaft on the axe is brand new. You know, he went and bought that for the movie. <laughs> Tag on it. Drink <laughs> raw eggs. Okay. Oh, God. All right, anyway. What like a show. We'll fix it. Fitch audition. <laughs> it did, didn't it? Yeah. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> we, we pulled the spoof. Okay, that is, hey, no, you know, no problem with me. After that, I'm going to start drinking my wine out of dirty glasses now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man, right? <laughs> Look here, man. So oddball is that testicle tanning tip <laughs> that Kid Rock, when asked about it by Carlson, wouldn't touch the idea with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> Orange. <laughs> now, no doubt, 
There is a nagging feeling of discontentment and disorientation among men in America. We all know that. But the fault, dear Brutus, lies not in our loins, but in ourselves. The world is a swirl of inflation, digitization, mass migration, globalization, income stagnation. Think of all the other nations and war. The American man may feel trapped in these circumstances of his that are much, much beyond any of our control. And yet, much of the situation he finds himself in lays in the choices he's made, not in the level of his hormones. Increasingly, the American man looks for reasons larger than himself to explain his predicament. He prefers to believe that he is a pawn in some great global gambit. He's a prisoner of war, held captive in aisle 10, where he's forced to shank an old woman for the last four pack of toilet paper. <laughs> this is not the stuff of folk ballads. Poet warriors are not supposed to worry themselves with the price of Charmin. The box store on the edge of suburbia is not the great frontier. The American man feels powerless, less than, that his life fluids are evaporating. And so... He looks to blame someone, the globalists, the capitalists, the Democrats, the Republicans, the socialists, the school teachers, the cops, the black man, the white man, the immigrant. The list of boogeymen is endless. The American man has been sold out, no doubt, but he's allowed himself to be sold out. He's replaced real books with Facebook. He equates debate in the public square with the drone of news opinion. He sits deep in the dark confines of his man cave, listening to the TV encourage him to zap his zagnuts. <laughs> There's a crisis of spirit and confidence in the American man that is undeniable. But the American man will not disappear. He must remember the Roman Empire collapsed more than a thousand years ago. And yet, there are Italian men at this very moment standing around in nice shoes, sipping good coffee. It'll be all right. The American man should also remember what he was taught. A contented life can only be achieved with effort and intellect, humanity and humility. Basting your balls in UV rays, I'm afraid, will only give you sunburn. Oh, God, right in the sack. No thanks. <laughs> Ira? <laughs> yeah, Ira, comment on that. I, I never had that happen before, so, you know. Hey. <laughs> well, I, then don't knock it until you try it. <laughs> All right. I got warm seats in my car, so I got you know, <laughs> oh! same thing. Oh! <laughs> oh, the, the key, Ira, is when you get a car that has cool seats. I got that, now, too, see? Thing. Yeah, I got that, too. <laughs> But I can't afford car seat warmers. <laughs> or coolers. You know, all I got left is a leftover bowl of gravy from Easter in my dog's warm tongue, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> mm. This isn't oh, how it's oh, supposed God, to be. <laughs> You're not supposed to. Well, it is true, though. It's true. Like, uh, we got deep problems. And we're allowing ourselves to be tricked. I like the line in there, too. Everybody wants to blame the boogeyman, whatever it may be in your life. Whatever your identity is, it's always something else. That's usually, you know, this big idea that's bigger that you can't control. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it. And we're going to move on. You got to pay attention. You got to get involved. For instance... Hey, man, uh, things are great. Uh, the plumbing's at an all-time low, and my 401k has never done better. Yeah, but you don't bother with the fact that the government's running a deficit, the Fed's got artificial interest rates, that the collapse is coming, they gave a tax cut to businesses forever, and you got a couple of nickels on your house, and you're out there saying, this is great. Well, does it feel great now? <laughs> because you didn't bother yourself with learning like what the consequences of that might be now it's just easy to blame who's ever got the chair. This is what the politicians, the globalists, the capitalists, the so all, this is what they do to you. Yeah. Who's ever left holding the bag, it's their fault, and it becomes a simple game of wrestling. Political gaslighting. Man, the last four presidents have sold you out. Yep. Bush, Obama, Trump, Biden. 
Nobody was serious. They're not serious now. They're not serious in Lansing. They're not serious in Detroit. They're not serious in Philadelphia. They're not serious in Birmingham, Alabama. And they're sure to fuck not serious in Sacramento. Yeah. And you're and you're like what? Tanning your balls. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, no. Don't do it. Not a good idea. It didn't, it didn't look comfortable either. What you gotta do is start getting your financial house in order since no one else will. And again. I want to thank our underwriters and mention them. Luke Nowacki. Personal financial advice. Let it play. Personal financial advice. Now it just goes like this. Where do I put my money where it doesn't lose value? In order to keep up with what's going on, you need a return of 8.5%, which is historically ridiculous. I have no idea how to do that. I'm just going to call Luke. Right? Yeah, I got his number here. Hold on. Where are my glasses? <laughs> Some fucker stole my glasses. 248 663 4748. How do you know that? Because I have a piece of paper right in front of me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, because I call Luke all the time. Personal financial advice. And if you get if you get a message that does not constitute a trade, financial advice, or anything, just leave a message, tell him who you are, leave your number, he'll call you back. Very fast. Too, yeah. <laughs> also, After all the who are we going to next? We're talking fine. Now, David Hall, let's do that. Sure. Got a lot of equity in your home. You might need to loosen up some cash again. Historically, mortgage rates are low, low fives. Yeah, you, you can consolidate too. They're doing a lot of consolidations right mm -hmm. now. Okay, what's that mean? Uh, like if you have all these crazy loans because you spent so much during COVID with all that free money and the bills are coming due and you don't know what's where and this rate's high and this rate's high, put them all together, you get a better rate. Give them a call. They'll get your Boom, credit. at five. Instead of, yeah. what, what's that credit card if you oh, don't shit. pay it on time? 25. Fuck, man. Yeah. Be smart, 24. people. Yeah. Stop sitting in your basement, bitching at your wife with the bills and this. Do something for yourself because nobody's going to do it for you. Yeah. I need you. I need you to be tight. If you ain't tight, I ain't tight. If Detroit yeah, ain't tight, yeah. if, if Wayne County debt. ain't, go ahead, Carrot. No, I'm saying, and out of debt. People don't realize debt is so detrimental and damaging. So if you can manage it or minimize it, that's the thing to do. And if it's consolidation, like Mark said, or just, you know, shuffling however many dollars you have, you have to do it. Karen, is that, that, is that a new bookshelf uh, buying you? <laughs> oh, that no. RP? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I hope you didn't go into debt buying that. It looks fancy. No, I didn't. Amazon, twenty four ninety five. It's two of them. And and it's paid for. They're That's the thing. I don't go into debt. It pays the R. Look at that. See? I mean, look. You, you, you. Looks great. Exactly. Look at Karen living within her means. Look at that. Well, I mean, the thing about it is, is that just because you can afford something doesn't mean that you have to buy it. You know? I mean, I saw this thing it says you know you spend the first half of your life acquiring things and the second half of them get, getting rid of it That's you start to realize you don't need half of the things that you wanted or that you spent money on you want to simplify your life but my thing is is that it's not about how much money you spend it's about how much money you can put your hands on that's what you focus on okay thank you for that and, uh, i'll remind everybody the uh, next car i'm getting that i'm going to purchase is a ford indeed right. next car i'm getting is a car i can afford that's right <laughs> Forgot you were a dad. It's an old it's blue. Dad. It's a blues too. You know, cute. Okay. Anyway, listen. Um, also, uh, hey Drew. Come here. <laughs> By the way, Come call callhallfirst.com. Got the number. Before yeah. it is, before we get the <laughs> testimony, I want to remind you: you got to get something done on right, on time, on budget. You're going to call Barry Ellen Tuck at ADR. That is what is. There's my glasses. Two four eight three one eight nine four two four. I thought I said three four. It's 9424. Let's see. I don't have my glasses either. 9424. 9424. Try them both. Like, get your stuff done. <laughs> get your projects fulfilled. Get your zoning variances done. Get it all done. You call Barry Allen Tech ADR, honest, ethical, smart. Now, uh, Drew Lane's with us real quick. Uh, Drew, 
Um, hey, jerk. I love your interplay with Mark on the phone number. That was really cute. <laughs> if the number had been right, it would have been a little better. <laughs> be, be careful what you wish for, Charlie, when he comes down. Call me. Just, I can't afford fucking legitimate people. Hey, we need all these. Ad- <laughs> we need all these advertisers, and when you use them. Be sure to tell them that you listen to No BS News and you hear them there because that's what makes the whole circle work. Oh. But never that's why you called me down here because... Because like every Friday we get we get conies and chicken delivered from American Coney and you, you're like a dog. <laughs> mm-hmm. How, how much do you love American Coney Island? I'm addicted to American Coney Island because Grace shows up every Friday and today I saw her. She's carrying two six packs and I'm like, that white bag... There's conies in that white bag. I know there are. How dare you call her a white bag? <laughs> Grace is no white bag. Anyway, let me tell you. She brings me two conies every Friday. I inhale them immediately. And sometimes I inhale a third or a fourth because I like them so much. But best of all, Grace loves No BS News and promotes and helps the show and keeps it rolling like the rest of the advertisers. So please frequent the advertisers and tell them how much and how glad you are that they sponsor No BS News. Thank you, Drew. You're welcome. Ah, oh, yeah, look at that. Look, that's a pretty tight that's show. Nice. That it's a pretty really tight good. show. Yeah. Thank you. Like that. All right, now that we got all the business taken care of, let's, let's really, strange segue, but no other way to do it. <clears throat> We're embroiled in another issue, police, community, black motorist, white cop, motorist Patrick Leoya is dead. Mm-hmm. What to make of it? What is here is Ira Todd, retired Detroit PD. Well, you, you heard at the top of the show his, his qualifications and his history. Ira, what, before we roll the tape, what do, you, what do you want to say writ large? What do we take from this whole thing? Well, first of all, we, we don't want a Monday morning quarterback, even though we're going to do that. Okay. But we want to take that both of these people are two human beings, and with human beings comes mistakes, right? Yeah. And so I just want to be – polite and respectful to both families you know i like that what you did was it was a good mood at the top let's calm down now mm-hmm. everybody take a breath it's no joke it's very serious about what we're about ready to do here yes yes well done mm-hmm. karen anything before we get into the tape that you want to say to the community listening or you know i like to know what karen thinks I always want to know what she thinks. She's going to let you well, know. Well, you know, I, I kind of, you know, I side with, with, with Ira, you know, um, everybody always wants you to pick a side, either you're on the civilian side or you're on the law enforcement side. Um, and everybody is human. You, everybody wants to go home. And like Ira said, when humans are involved, they're human issues, they're human mistakes, they're human barriers that no legislation, no march, no anything is going to change, which is why we continue to see these situations unfold. So until we get to the heart of the human element, we're going to continue to wrangle with these things. Well said. And I I would like to say this. We're doing the best we can to be frank and honest with you that we are trying to speak out loud. We're from three different angles and perspectives on this, right? And we're willing to show ourselves we're not God, we're not the end all be all, but it is possible to discuss mm-hmm. and maybe get somewhere. So please take this in the spirit of we're just trying. We're not hateful people. We try not to be bigots. I believe everybody is. You wouldn't be human unless you were. And from there, let's begin with the tape that was released by the Grand Rapids Police Department uh, from the incident that happened earlier this month. Um, can I see it somewhere, man? Yep. Can you pull it up? There it is. Okay. I, I don't have it here. Joe, go ahead and transition to it. Yeah, there you okay. go. Okay. Why don't we, uh, and Joe, is Joe running the tape? Yeah. Well, I can run the tape. I can okay. stop it and start well, it. Uh, Ira, whenever you want to say stop or care, anybody wants to say stop to ask a question, that's what we'll do. But let's, let's roll it. This, it, the, the car has been pulled over. Okay. One officer, right? In the car. One officer in the car. La Yoya is driving. A friend of his is in the passenger seat. It's raining. It's on a residential street. Hey, stay in the car. Stay in the car. Nelson and Greg. Can we stop right there? Yeah. Ira, I want to ask you something. This is what I know from... I've been invited to be in a police car. Mm -hmm. 
you know, sometimes against my will. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, but if I leave the tape up, please, and don't take it down. Number one, this is what I've been told, and it's true. That car, when you're a police officer, is a coffin. Mm -hmm. uh, you're trapped in it. There's no way in. There's no way out. So I'm seeing a motorist get out of his car. He's being told to get back in his car. And only then does the officer get out. What, what, is, what is your take of what you're seeing here? And um, like we said, it's Monday morning quarterback. Please, so, yes. So, you this know, is just you. Yeah. I would have did a little different. I would have did it even with the approach and even how he pulled him over. I think the distance is too far. I don't think he controlled it. I don't think he had a plan of action. I had a sergeant years ago back at gang squad. Sergeant Beasley used to tell us, you can pick and choose where you pull these people over at. You can pick and choose the area, pick and choose the environment and things like that. I don't think he had a plan of action. I don't think he thought about if this guy gets out, if they get out in bail, what do I do? And so initial, the initial stop should have been where pull him over, get on the radio, call it out. I'm pulling him over for an improper place. I got a vehicle X, Y, Z. Uh, I got a black man who just jumped out of the car. I would have got on my speaker or the radio and said, hey, look here, get back in the car. Because okay. There's no way he could control that situation. You got one guy getting out. And normally, most cops know this. If you work the streets long enough, and the gang squad taught us a lot, believe it or not. And because you do a lot of this all the time, when most guys get out the car, they're going to run. For some reason, they're going to run. You know, when they, we call it the rubberneck. They get out, they start looking around. They're looking for a place to run and which direction to run in. So this cop knew that. I understand he knew that. And he was trying to control the situations from a distance. And that was, that was a no-no, too. Plus, you had another car, a guy in the passenger seat. Let's 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 roll forward here, dude. I'm stopping you. You have a license? Now stop it right there for a second, can you? Now even that whole thing, dude. I'm stopping you. You lose your authority there. Now I I think you you can personalize and be a little more personal when you stop people. And say, hey, look here, sir, sir, hold up. Don't don't jump out the car like that. You know what? For my safety and for your safety, that's not the proper thing to do. Okay. So right now, I wouldn't even put him back in the car now because if I'm going to get that close to him, I'm going to control him on the car. Right now, I need you to put your hands on the car. This is for your safety and my safety. I think if you communicate with people and slow it down a bit, you take all that little frustration away. May I ask you this? Now, you're alone. Right. He's gotten out of the car. Right. Training-wise, I'm not, again, I'm, I'm not trying to get in the mind of a cop or mm -hmm. judge him. I'm, we're, we're trying to figure out how to de-escalate this business in America. It doesn't appear to me that the cop does himself any favor walking right up to the guy. Mm -hmm. Dude, now all of a sudden you don't have distance. Mm -hmm. you're, you've, it's an uh, uncertain situation. Guy's gotten out of the car, and now you're nose to nose with him. It's kind of a catch-22. You know, what Let me ask, I'm going to ask this, too. There's mm -hmm. still another person in the vehicle. Exactly. To me, the officer opens himself up because he can't see the person in the vehicle. The guy could have a weapon. He could fire at the officer through the vehicle. I mean, there's a lot that, that to me, the whole situation is compromised from my perspective. And I, I'm trying to get in the mind of the officer here. So he, the only thing he knows is that this plate doesn't match the car, but the second he gets out of the car, he's going to presume that he will run. Well, most likely because what happens is, and from my experience, when people jump out of the car, a lot of times they're getting ready to run or they're getting ready to run so that person in the car with the dirty stuff can get out and walk away while the cops are chasing them. Let's gotcha. make this okay. clear, though, okay. when somebody jumps out of the car. Yes. In the overwhelming majority of times that you pull somebody over, nobody runs. For the most, for mo yeah. well, not all the time. Because if, if, oh, the if over, uh, let me say it again. Listen, the super majority of time when you pull somebody over, nobody's jumping out of the car. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So for the public, don't jump out the car. I, and, and for your safety, too. The, and it's know, a legal order, right? Yes. The cops allowed to say, get in the car. Yes. Get back in the car, sir. You or know. get out of the car. Yes. Okay. And he's trying to control the situation. Well, that's is that his legal or her legal authority, and you must abide by it? Yes. Okay. That's yes. the law. Yes. And he has a right to stop you and investigate you. Well, now, we can get in, and this is, we're going to guess, but we're not going to guess. I just want listeners to know, we do got to ask because we know the history of this country, of Detroit, of Grand Rapids. Mm -hmm. Why'd you run the plate? Why are you running the plate? What made you run the plate? Why exactly did well, you? They, they, it could have been a number of reasons. Yes. That's, see, that's what I'm saying. We don't have all the facts here. The guy could have been circling. He could have known who this guy was, you know? Studies have been done in Grand Rapids. Oh, yeah. They run plates on black guys. And they, people, so they didn't get a peeky-poo in there. 
And we run, and let me tell you something. People, cops gonna run place. Period. You see a suspicious car or see something that I might as well ask this, dude. Suspicious. I might as well ask this. Mm -hmm. When you doing that, now you're retired. Mm -hmm. Are you racial profiling or are you um, culture profiling? Like, and, and you know what I mean. Like, white guys get pulled over a lot too, and more white guys die in traffic stops, mm -hmm. not per capita, but as a raw number in America. Well, black. Well, this, is, it, is it a certain kind of raggedy ass car? There's smoke in there. There's well, dice hanging. Well, well, think about this. You can pull over for anything. You can pull I, I over somebody for not sitting directly behind the steering wheel. Right. So there's a number of things. You can pull somebody over for so having a dirty who, windshield. I want you to be honest. So who do you decide to pull over? The white suburban mom because she's doing that? Or the guy driving the 77 Fleetwood? Well, you, you, sometimes it's just... Honesty. It, I'm just saying. It's all about the circumstances. He may have saw maybe... A screw loose in that plate, and said, so "Let me run this plate. Don't look like it's why there's it, screws loose in everybody's plate. But it may be improper plate, or I may have I'm seen not, this I'm not asking before. for this situation. I, okay, I'm asking, cop, street guy. You work narcotics. You worked gangs. You're looking for a type of person. Correct. Right. Correct. Some some giveaway. Some tell. Yes. Right. Yes. That includes brown guys, white guys, and black guys. Yes. You're looking for a culture. Or you're looking for, it depends on what unit you're working. If you're a traffic cop, you're looking for traffic violations. If you're a gang squad cop, you're looking for felony stops, those kind of things. You're looking for drugs, drugs and dope. So it depends on the circumstances that you're working in. He's a one-man car, so he's probably like a traffic car or just somebody that patrols and pick up reports and things like that. You know, and that's another problem, I think, having one man in a police car, especially in this climate these days. One man in a police car, and people don't like police right now. You know. Oh, hell no. You know. So this guy from the very beginning, he was up against, you know, the neighborhood. The and this is important to say, Karen, I, I think we should. <laughs> it has no place in the court of law. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. But we're not worried about the court of law. Mm -hmm. We're worried about what's happening in the streets of America. Mm -hmm. Why would it do get out the car and run? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you. And we're going to get to it a little bit later. Like I said, I've been invited in the car. And... Put in the car. Mm -hmm. When you look at a man's history, why would you run? This guy got busted a couple times yeah. in connection with stolen cars. The guy got misdemeanors uh, for those. They they bargained them down. He was getting sentenced that day on a traffic violation. Drinking and driving. Drinking right. and driving. Multiple drinking. So what the cops sometimes don't know, I'm pulling you over because I see something that, it's, that warrants me pulling you over. I got a legal right to pull you over. But we don't know sometimes that guy could have been a felon in there. He could have had a gun in there, could have had dope in there. And like this cop probably didn't know, he was being sentenced that day. So this guy's probably thinking like, oh, they pulling me over. I didn't show up in court or something. Yeah, we're and not going I'm to state of mind. We're not going to state. Okay. But, right? right? But again, like we're looking, saying lots of people, lot, sorry, Karen, lots of people in society are like, why would you bolt? It was just a fucking improper plate. You're getting a ticket. Maybe he gets towed. Because he probably knew if he ran my name. I was going to come up with a warrant and I'm going to wind up going to jail. Karen, go ahead, please. I'm, I think it's important to say because, you know, people always, at, you know, we've been very careful to say we weren't there. We don't know the state of mind. There are variables that exist that, you know, we can't monitor or respond to. But everybody's so quick to say, why don't they comply? You know, all they had to do was comply. Or, yeah, they want to cite, you know, whatever his outstanding issues were, which were not known at the time of the stop. Okay, I'm I sorry. We got to do this. We we already qualified it with that, Karen. The but fact I'm is- saying, but I'm, I'm reading people's comments and I'm just saying, I think it's important that when he's pulled over, that officer doesn't know that he had past tickets or, or any of that. I, so, that's not you know, what we're no, saying. What we're saying is, dude decided to run. What guy in his right mind decides to run? Have you ever run? Who, me? Yeah. From who? No, I've been I haven't gotten in any trouble. Let no. me make this <laughs> real plain. Do I look like a guy that went to private school? Do you think my daddy had a boat? No. no. Do you think I've been pulled over with warrants? Handcuffed, put in the can, had to do the weekend over at, what was it? Oh, it used to be on, what was it, the 13th? Mm -hmm. And then... They won't give you no water and you got to be there all four day holiday weekend. You're drinking out of the fucking toilet. You think I ran? I don't want to die. Comply. And you want to hear something else? Once he ran, guess what? He just violated another law. It's called resisting and obstructing. 
because the mm-hmm. officer gave him a command. Mm-hmm. So he just escalated up to a felony. Is this it is a felony. Legally, you have to comply. Comply. It's not a, it's not a, if you want to, it's the law, you must comply. Absolutely. Okay. But hang with it, Karen, because we're getting somewhere, folks. Mm-hmm. You're going to be surprised, I think, how this conversation turns out. Right? But we got to be sensible. Right. Okay. So let's roll it. Open you up. Do you have a license? Do you have a license? For what? I'm stopping you. Do you have a license? What done? Do you have a driver's license? Do you speak English? Yes. Can I see your license? <laughs> what do you want? The plate doesn't belong in this car. Do you have a license or no? Do you have a driver's license? Yes. Where is it at? It's in the car. Get it for me. What happened? you want? The plate does not belong in this car. Amen. Pause, please. I don't know. I'm asking you as the police officer. I think that's dangerous. It was totally. To ask a guy to reach in the car. It was totally. That's bad training. Bad training. Bad training. He didn't have control of the situation. Now you're going to let him reach into the car with another person in the car? Could have handed him a gun or anything? You know. What should he have done? I would have I would have told him, put your hands on the car. I would have secured him, had him there. I would have got on my radio immediately. Okay, this you know this he got split second stuff to go on, but I got on the radio and said I need assistance. I got somebody else in the car. This guy looks like he's gonna run. You know he's moving around. I need assistance here. Let him hear it on the radio too. They know somebody's coming to the area. Oh, that's you know, a good point, yeah. excellent. Okay, would you have made the passenger get out of the car? At, not not at that time. Okay, excellent. Because right now there's no reason he, to. He's in there, and you can kind of watch him. You can watch his little furtive gestures, anything else. So okay. you know, and you got that car between you and that passenger too. Let us roll on. Right there. For those of you listening, not watching, he's talking to his friend in the car. It's right there. No, there's nothing's there. Nothing's coming out. Door gets closed. No, no, no. Now he no. started walking. Stop, stop. See? Put your hands right So now he's, okay, pause. Yep. Is that an immediate place to do it? Well, he, right now, think about this. Instinctively, that cop, what else can he do? Okay. You know, and it's like, okay, I, I just gave you an order. This guy's going to run. I'm going to put my hands on him and try to restrain him. He starts fighting. So at that point, he's already engaged. He's got to move forward with it. Okay. Put your hands on Stop. I'm going to be honest with you. Right, stop right there. At that point right there, because they had another guy in the car. And I'm going to tell you something. Instincts really, yeah. they teach us. You know, catch that rabbit. Bad guys run, we chase them. Let me pause you there. Mm-hmm. For for those of you that are listening, not watching, this is when Leola uh, starts running mm-hmm. and the officer starts chasing him. Chasing. He okay. start wrestling and then chasing. Okay. Now, at that time, I'd have backed off a little bit because you still got the guy in the car. We don't know if any weapons in the car. We don't even know. He haven't even searched the guy that's, that's fighting is this, and running. With you him. just said something, Karen, mm-hmm. th- th- and this is what I want to know from you and your whole life in Detroit. The guy starts running, and you chase him. Instinctively. You were taught to do that. That's the academy. This guy, the cop's wide open because there's somebody in the passenger seat. You haven't frisked this guy. Was it worth chasing him and caring for you? Let's say this guy runs and runs into somebody's home. Should the cop have chased him is what I'm asking, I guess. I, first of all, I want to ask Karen. Okay. Well, for me, and this is what I said when this first happened, there were two opportunities to circumvent the, the, the situation. The first one was when the officer asked him to get back in the vehicle. That was the first, that was the first opportunity. The second opportunity was when he ran and the officer chased him. Like Ira said, at, at some point, if maybe when he first pulled him over, I would have called for backup. I'm thinking he got pulled over for a plate. It's that's almost like chasing somebody, uh, you know, from from for stealing something from 7-Eleven and you end up in a car accident and somebody's dead. You got to look at to me just as from a civilian standpoint, weighing, you know, the risk and, and the possible outcome. So, no. OK, Ira, I agree with her. And I, I, I think at that time you got to keep assessing the situation as you go along. I need to pause here. OK. He agrees. How many years you got on? At 35. 40, all 40 in law enforcement. You lived everything. 
And I'm telling you, I've been in that situation too. Oh, I know you've been. Where you've been situation. by yourself. I've been in an undercover car where I've been by myself. We get the guy, I try to grab him. He takes off. You know what I do? I look at him and I just start calling it out. And Sometimes it's, a, it's, it's a, experience. So, this is a credibility moment though for, you know, who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, I hate to make it about us for a minute, but you got to, Karen's super smart. Not only just savvy, but understand she understands what the police academy is. She's had training. She's run the biggest city in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And that's... Yes. And you got to understand, too, the officer wasn't wrong for giving chase either. Oh. You he know? wouldn't know. He was legally justified. But the question now becomes, we keep talking about shit we don't know in this country. It's a matter of training, which is why we asked you to come in here. Maybe this is a place where training needs to change. And it's just not training. It's experience. But, it's, it's, there's a number of things. Okay, but know? but this maybe shouldn't be a place. Yes. Why? Because there was no weapon. Well, you got one person. Yeah. One man car. Okay. You got another person in that car. Okay. Right. We don't know if we got somebody laying in the you back. Still haven't of that radioed car. for backup. That's right. Okay. So we don't know. And he's he's the guy I've already tried to take your taser. I couldn't tell if he not had yet. Got, not yet. Yeah. But no. It, 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 first it's he coming. tried. To, it's yeah, he tried to get it out. But it's like he's fighting with two things. So he got a taser in his hand. No, no. You're getting yeah, ahead of the tape. Okay. I'm okay. Sorry. So what we'll do is we'll keep going. The the, the off a guy runs for a low level infraction. Right. And he's exposed. Yes. Hasn't called for backup. Jackrabbit goes. Hound dog follows. Instinctually, though, that's what cops going to do. I know, but chase. maybe there is a, a thing right there. 100% right. They got to start talking and training. Instead people. of like, hut, 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 hut. Oh, okay. yes. Because we're talking about de-escalation yes. and, and trying to end this thing, which, be honest, only in the age of videotape do people of the higher class now believe it. And again... The blacks in this country catch the shit end of the stick and any measurable thing. But it happens to white dudes and gals all the time and brown dudes. I believe, along with racial component and the way poor people act, is also the way that we get treated. And the way law enforcement treat poor people, too. It's got to change. And I don't want to... Take it away from this as a, a black man. But there is a class component. And even and how if we're going to address this, we got to address it for everybody. And even how the white officer talked to him. Let me ask you this. If that would have been a man, a white male the same age in a car, but maybe in proper place, you think that white officer would have got out there and talked to him the same way? Yes. Do you think so? Oh, you mean like if you're a lower class dude? Yeah. Yeah. You think so? Oh, you think a cop would have chased you? Yeah. You think he would have beat your ass? Yeah. Oh, I believe that sure. part. But do you but think he would have communicated the, day, the same there way? There was a young lady that had been pulled over. I don't remember. I think okay. it was East Point or something. I don't know. And she repeatedly spat on the police officers. That's I mean, they didn't shoot. I mean, there, there have been ish, opportunities or, you know, where I would imagine that if, in fact, it were just normal for officers to respond this way, you know, I mean, I've seen video where these people okay. are fighting police officers. Watch this. White, and the police watch officers still retreating. Yeah, but watch this. Right. Watch this what you're doing. Watch what you're doing. I've seen video. I'm telling you the real life. And I'm asking right, you no, about. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. No. The man that you mistakenly killed. Mm -hmm. What was his color? He was he was a, a Cuban. Brown. Brown. That's mm. right. Mm. What color are you? Black. Mm. It's just. The shit, dude. It's the shit. So I can show you as many videotapes, Karen, of like really bad and justified shooting of white people, but we don't, it, it's not fitting the narrative. I'm just I, here to say, yeah. we go, if we're going to fix police, poor people, then we got, we better include everybody. We're going to, we're going to treat this as a, at least I want to, as a case for us all. But we got to not for just fix, we just not got to fix the police. Some of these citizens got to be taught. Ah, that's it. Yes. Thank you for I'm doing I'm serious. That. Some of these citizens got to be taught. And it's like, you know, it's nothing wrong with following the orders of a police officer. It's nothing wrong with, how about some public announcements? Or how about some billboards? Hey, look here, guys. This is what you have to do when you get stopped by a police officer. This is what we're doing that's here. What, that's what I said last week. Yep. I said there's not enough information about what per people should do when they're pulled over. Thank you. Do you do you crack your window? If it's dark, do you illuminate the interior? Do you put your hands on your steering wheel? P 
people don't know. The other part of it, too, is part, like you said, Charlie, the narrative and the existing tension that people automatically expect, both from civilians that have been pulled over and from civilians from a police perspective. There's already an anticipated level of tension. So if you're not de-escalating that level of tension, you're just adding fuel to the fire. Let me say this right off of that. Like, I know a white man, conservative, Mm -hmm. does nice for himself, not super rich guy. He said to me, when we're talking about this, why don't they teach this in school? You know, what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to behave. I said, hey, brother, I thought you came from the political point of view that the the school don't tell you what to do and how to behave. That's your responsibility. So teach your son what he's supposed to do. I teach my daughter. I don't expect the school to teach my kid how to behave. So there is a, a component of personal responsibility. Let's roll this tape. 1915. Got one running. Now he radios. Only now. Stop. Tackles him on the neighbor's lawn. Stop. Okay. They're they're tussling. He's got his head in the ground. Stop. It's a lot of stops. Okay, now there's physical force. He's kneeing him. Is that justifiable? It's justifiable. Why? We can let the tape roll. We can keep letting it roll. You use whatever force is necessary to affect the arrest. I want to ask you this. Uh, how much, um, now you see a guy come out of the house and you know that guy's in the car. Is, is he aware of it or is it just, I got to stop this guy right here? Right, right now, he's just probably focusing on that guy right there. His tunnel vision on that guy right there. He's got to fight with this guy, make sure this guy don't grab his gun, training don't grab his problem. taser, training all that problem. stuff. Well, we know how this ends, but at that point, he could be in a lot of trouble. If he, there he was a killed. weapon, there's not, but if, you know. Just trying to think in that moment, right? He could be killed by the passenger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It just that. And he's fighting for his life. We got to give, we, we got to be honest about this. That cop is fighting for his life. Now, what we see, like we sitting back and in, in relaxed in our chairs and we critiquing this cop, but you weren't in the middle of that right then and at that time. And when you're in the middle of that, trust me, you ain't thinking about nothing else but going home. Well said. You know, so I'm just being honest, okay, you know. That's, that's well said. <laughs> What happened? We back? Yeah, what happened? Drew. <laughs> <laughs> and Facebook. <laughs> Facebook, Zuckerberg, can't handle the truth. Man. Can't. Okay, anyway, we're back. Pardon our dust. Usually I'd flip out, but this is so compelling. This is so yeah. honest and real that we just, that never happened. I'm glad y'all went and got a beer and everything. And if anybody wants to be the beer sponsor... <laughs> Here's where you would go. <laughs> Plug it in right here. No, don't worry. I'm working my ass off on our other studio. I know. We know. It's, it's gonna be great. It's gonna right. be great. Okay. So right. where do we leave off? Let me let me get the footage. We are now in Grand Rapids. I believe it's April fourth. The officer who has not been named, which is an issue, he's out on pay, which bothers people. He shouldn't be named, though. Not right now. They don't normally name criminals until there's actually a warrant secured or he's been arraigned. So in all fairness, the officers should be named while the investigation is going on. I don't believe that as a reporter. We're, we're busy blasting everybody well before anybody gets arraigned. Yeah. Just say, We're talking also the court of public opinion. You, we cannot dismiss that because in reality, in the truth, Karen and Ira and Mark, Mm. in mannequin what we're more worried about is the public reaction to this thing so yeah. that mm-hmm. must be taken into account and you must take into account that officer has a family he's a human being and we don't want a bunch of people going to try to kill his family or go attack his house and stuff like that too so let's take into account that human side too you know let's protect that officer too because he was out there protecting us i agree yeah karen do you agree with that of course, Charlie, you remember my brother served uh, a lot of years in law enforcement. Uh, my sister had a partial career in it as well. I have the utmost respect for law enforcement. I don't have respect for people on either side that don't have respect for the other side. But no, I told I totally I I'm, I'm all good with that. Okay, then let me let me take this position for the people that get pulled over and this happens to in their families. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should be suspended without pay 
and if things are adjudicated your way, you get your back pay. So then, but it, so it, then, cops should be sub subjected to a watered down version of the Constitution, because I got the same constitutional right as you. So before I'm a, a, a before I'm found guilty of something, yeah, fine, you're gonna suspend me. You're gonna take my livelihood from me. It happened to me. Now, but I got what, but, but this is real simple to do because uh, I get. Uh, Ooh. If you're a garbage man, you don't get suspended if you're uh, charged with a crime. Hey, but, no, but, reporter, watch this, but, but watch this, dude. I get arrested, and I got to sit in the fucking county. Some guys have been sitting there since 2019. Presumed to be innocent, but you got their liberty. You've mm -hmm. taken their livelihood. But this is a person that you gave the responsibility and the authority to be a law enforcement officer. So yeah, there should be some different circumstances for mm, it's man. We just trying to we try to let I'm, everybody I'm, know that we know, and these are not easily answerable. Mm -hmm. But I hear everybody, mm -hmm. and I don't want my kid dead. I don't want to be dead. But if your father was that cop, you don't want him dead either. No, I don't. It could easily went the other way. One hundo. Yeah. Right? And, if, and if the name gets out there, think of well, like you forget the to. name. Yeah. Okay, I, I accept that. Okay. The pay. I could yeah. I could garnish you your pay. I see I don't I don't agree with that. And I, I'm glad we talking about that. When I when I got into my altercation, it was a split second decision. Altercation. I, well, I killed a guy, okay? Split second decision, okay? And I was suspended without pay, okay? For over a year. Oh, you were suspended without pay because without you were pay. charged. No, I, I got suspended without pay before I got charged. And oh. when I got charged, you know, it just kept on going. Interesting. But when when they they decided to when well, none of you right. I think once I got charged, they suspended me without pay. And I was off off the books. No benefits, no medical benefits. I had a whole family. That's a key I, deal, though. Let's let's get back to that. Yes. Once you were charged, yes, then yes. they took your money and yes. your pennies. Okay. Yes, and I still think that's wrong, because now while I'm fighting for my for for my to Life. prove my innocence, right? I can't provide for my family. Then you got to deal with the fact that okay, I just killed a guy, so I got to mourn this guy's death. I got to deal with I'm a human being who just killed another human being, whether it's justifiable or not. I just took somebody's life, and now I got to worry about my family, my kids, my wife, their lives. So now you can put added stress to this officer who's just out there trying to do his job. And even with this cop here, they can say what they want to say. I tell you right now, he didn't get up that morning and say, I'm going to go put a bullet in the back of somebody's head over a traffic violation. Can I just make a right turn real yeah. quick? Because yes, I feel it, man, and I, I think only that you can have a relationship like this. Could I ask it out loud? Yeah. Without reliving it, looking at it today, what, 30, 25 years later? Yeah, 1993. It happened to me. 30, so. 20, it's coming up on that anniversary. Not going to be a good anniversary for you. Right. Right. April 28th. Do August. you feel today that you were justified? Oh, I definitely was justified. I heard a shot, saw my partner fall. And then how we were trained, the way I was trained, I acted exactly how I was trained. I eliminated the threat. We're not, we're not taught to shoot the kill or anything. We are shot, we're taught to eliminate the threat. Shoot. That's, well, you shoot center mass. You don't, you don't do head shots. You don't do none of that crap. You shoot center mass. That's what you're trained to do. And you have to Center mass means the big part. The big part. And you, you want to eliminate the threat. We're not trying to kill you. We're trying to eliminate that threat immediately. Okay. So I was justified. I heard a shot, saw my partner go down. You know, I saw a guy reach before that. I took action. Split second decision. So I think that's what the courts and the jury took into account. So this is a split-second decision. They saw the same thing I saw. Even some of the witnesses saw the same thing I saw, thought that this guy had shot my partner. So here it is. I'm investigating two other people on the wall. My partner getting an altercation with a guy. Hear a shot, see my partner fall. I step in front of him. This is before we wore vests. So this is just how you do things instinctively. You know, I'm going to take a bullet for my partner. And you don't think about it because that's my partner. You just killed my partner. And so you're going to eliminate that threat. And I fired multiple rounds. Right? Come on. I just want to let people think about what they just heard just for just for a second. A real human being who's been through this. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. It. Uh if we can continue on, please. So the wrestling. Yeah. He can't sub he can't subdue the man. Now see this is a good angle. I haven't seen this angle. <laughs> well, we try to provide here. So they're on the ground. You see a guy standing behind him? Mm -hmm. Guy's getting out of the car now. What's up, man? The passenger. 
So obviously, what's happening is uh, the cop is kind of duck walking him. He he can't control him really. Mm -hmm. He's got a little control. Stop resisting here. No, he good. Not resisting nothing, bro. This isn't a high heated thing at this point. Pause, please. Ira, so they're uh, forgive the analogy. They're almost like waltzing yeah. really physically here. He's still struggling. Is this the time for the cop maybe to back off? I would have. You would I, have. I would have. I I mean, if you can't get full control of him, okay, now it's time to back up and take some action, you know? But he's still trying to keep his hands on him right now because he's still trying to have control. But eventually that cop is gonna get tired. And you see, he is getting tired. That's what I'm, I was saying. He said back up and take some action, Ira. What action should he have taken? I'd have backed up then and pulled my gun then and said, hey, look here, you know, drop my taser. I've still had the taser or something like that. But I'd, okay. I'd have backed up and said, hey, look here, okay, you've resisted long enough. Because if you push it too hard, okay, and he starts fighting, what if he gives out and he can't fight anymore and this guy get his gun and kill him? So mm -hmm. at some point, you got to disengage. Sometimes you got to reassess that situation. Training again. Yes. So at this point, it's dangerous. You don't know if he has a weapon. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have your taser at this mm -hmm. point. Training again. Mm -hmm. You might want to back off, de-escalate, and show big force. If, 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 but it's up to the cop now. If he still think I can handle him, I still got my energy, and I'm tussling with him, but okay. I still got him, it, it might be okay then, for then him. Then let's assume that's what's going on yes. here. Let's continue yes. on. Now comes the taser. What? And immediately. Now, can you stop it right there? Yeah. Now, this is what I want everybody to look at. A lot of people saying that he's trying to take the taser. I think, honestly, he's trying to prevent from being tased. Yes. So, you know, that fight or flight type thing. You State, know. state of mind, again, we're doing that. But I don't see him pulling the taser. Right. right. He's, he's trying to push it to the ground. Yeah, he's trying to grab it. Okay, and but state, trying, state of to, mind. Yeah. All I know what I see here is the taser is a weapon. Yes. And you have a police officer's service weapon. Mm -hmm. That, it meant you take it to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I can guarantee you I never have touched an officer's service weapon. You, you touch my gun, you, go, you, go, you get to have it. You get to keep it, mm. if you know what I mean. So you what don't, do you don't mean? I, I will pop you. You try to take my gun from me. I'm being real. I'm an old school cop. Okay. You try to take my gun from me, I'm going to pop you. Because what you going to do with my gun? I'm not gonna give you a chance to kill me. Mm -mm. So I'm just being now, real. You'll have wow. the other guy that's that's there, and the, he's out of the picture. Could be doing anything else. Am I right, Ira? Yes. I mean, he's still a threat. And you saw the guy around the other car that came out the house, and so we don't know who these people are or how they may engage. So that's why I said I may have released that guy and took took reassessed that whole situation and backed up and kind of scanned the area and wait for my help to come. I didn't think you talk like that. Mm -hmm. I'm just being real. I, okay. I'm shooting from I, the hip. My mouth's hanging open. Okay. Let's let's continue. Oh, you see that? It's firing. Mm -hmm. But he's got his hand on. So let go of the taser. You hear the officer and and uh, Loyo, La, La Yoya, They're breathing hard now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now they're time. underground. What's the problem? Let go of the taser. No, like, like he good. Like you can talk to him, bro. See, now, the officer had the taser then. No, they both had the taser. Let's hey, go back. Can we go back a few frames? For those of you listening, they're on the ground. The taser is yellow. And here we go. Uh, one more, two more, right there. They both have the taser, as I see it. Mm -hmm. Right? That's why the cop's yes. got his arm out like that. Yep. I think the cop had got it out of his hand. Yeah, well, then then why is he holding it to the ground? Play it again. A couple frames. Because it's in his hand. But I think the this cop is what will happen in the court of to law. the ground. See it? Look. So they got, got, no, they both got. I can oh, see, I see both it. of their hands it. on it. There you go. See it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me just make a point of that. Now, that taser's not pointing towards the cop either. You think the cop's looking at where the fuck is he? <laughs> well, I mean, you- They're both doing like- You not got me. your hand. You got your hand on the taser. So, you know I got at least that taser control for a minute, right? Okay. Pause. Let me watch. Let me watch. Okay. Watch. State of mind. But I'm just watching this. Obviously, the cop's right-handed. I can mm -hmm. see his revolver, his pistol on his right hip. Mm-hmm. He's holding the taser with his right hand. Mm -hmm. Layoya is holding it with his right hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no way you could even get to your, your pistol. You couldn't get to it because you're right-handed. You'd have to let the taser go mm -hmm. in order to get... So now, at this point, Layoya is on his back. Cops on top of him. They both got the taser. Mm -hmm. You're in no man's land. Mm -hmm. There's there no way to disengage now. Mm -hmm. Is that true? 
Well, he's he's gonna disengage. I know, but I mean, look at you, the the oh, Swami. Yeah, yeah. Who can tell yeah. the future here. That's right. Okay. Yeah, uh, we're frame about. by frame. Okay, frame by frame. So That's there's right. no way to get out of this. No. Okay, let's go ahead. No, like, like he good. Like you can talk to him, bro. Nineteen fifteen. Now, what we're seeing here is the, the passenger. Uh, passenger out of the car walking towards them. Yes. Bad scene. Yeah, yeah. Like, he good, bro. Like, can you talk to him like, girl, like, can you, yeah. Stop grabbing him like that. No! Now he good, like, for her. Yo, you hit him, too. Look at that shit. Still wrestling. Wow. It's like a minute and a half. Let go of the taser! One, let go of the taser. Now he ain't got no taser. I see that. Let go of the taser! Two, let go of the taser. Now he goes for a service. Three, drop the taser. He's got a weapon. Is boom. Okay. Now you saw that, right? I think maybe we want to like. And I okay, tell you this. Uh, you know, hold on a second. We don't need to dwell on that shot. If we can, you know, maybe not have it up. He's dead. He's been shot. Go ahead, Ira. Now you see when he pulled his gun and put it to the back of his head, right? And I think he was just some threatening guy, like let go of the taser, let go of the taser, let let him feel that cold still against his head. You know, I'm not playing now. But you see when the guy pushed up and he tried to push him back down, that's when the gun went off. I bet you, accidental shooting. I'm willing to bet lunch on that. Okay. I believe his gun went off. Is in the trigger guard. I don't think he was going to shoot him at that time, but it boom. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I got to do the qualifier. Mm -hmm. Whatever you believe, that's not what happened. I mean, right? And again, I would say I could give you a qualifier. Maybe I was pointing in your shoulder blades. I thought about that. And, and I've been wrestling for a minute and a half. And you know, because you've pulled that weapon before, you've trained with it, one inch, a foot away, like you're tired and you, and you pull it up a little bit, that's, a, that's the distance between your shoulder blade, mm -hmm. your shoulder, and your head. Yeah. We could guess all day long. Oh, yeah. The big question here now. Mm-hmm. Was that comp justified? Should he be charged? Don't know yet. We got to see the whole thing, the whole picture, the whole investigation. Right. That cop may say, hey, look here. He turned the taser towards me. Or look, I was exhausted. I couldn't do anything else. He had already taken my taser. He might take my gun now. If qualified at that school, what do you think? I think, honestly, I think they're going to charge him. Should he be charged? I don't know, man. That's a hard call. Well, I'm asking you for the hard answer. Okay, for the hard answer. Let me think here. Remember, I didn't say should he be convicted. Okay. I said should he be charged, Ira, and I know what you told me earlier. Yeah, I think taking executing somebody, shoot somebody in the back of the head that way, I think there was a couple of things he could have done. I'm Monday morning cornerback. So though. first of all, before you do that, mm -hmm. state clearly, should he be charged? I, I think so. I do. Wow. I mean, and I, oh, and I oh, hate oh, saying that. Wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to do that. Mm-hmm. Again, mm -hmm. should he be charged? I say yes. I think he should be. Okay. And I have to give you the room to say that, but I need to talk to Karen for a second. Just she and I, if you know. Karen, last week, I, you know, we kind of got into a little bit, and you called it an execution. I didn't know how you could say that. And Ira, you know, I, I know the guy. I trust him implicitly. He's, he's got a lot of... Um, Experience, he used the same word. Maybe, maybe I'm not seeing shit right. Well, I mean, Charlie, you know, and when you when you're talking about whether or not he should be charged, and, and that you you've got legal implications that these things have to fall on to, under in order for charges to be filed. Um, conviction is a whole nother thing. But you both pointed out something that's going to weigh heavily on this, as they do similar cases around the country, and that's the court of public opinion. You know, a lot of this and what happens will be in response to the level of, you know, public outcry that continues to be heard as a result. But as I pointed out last week, too, there are positions that require a different level of decorum and demeanor and, uh, you know, constrainment um, in their positions. And being a police officer, a pilot, a doctor, though those positions don't, they require something more than a person messing up your um, order at McDonald's. Um, and so there is a higher level of expectation uh, in terms of how situations are handled. 
And I and I agree with her 100%. You know, she said a lot more elegant than I could ever say. I know, that. right? But yeah, I know. She's amazing. But I'm telling you, really, think about this. You know, people went crazy when Michael Vick was killing pit bulls. Mm-hmm. That's a human being, and you put a gun to the back of his head. Now, and I and I get it. Nowadays, cops don't know what to do. Because back in the day, like I said, we didn't use hands. We, it was a physical job. We were allowed to fight somebody. I work gang squad, and guys will tell you. I shot and killed somebody, yes. But I've had several guys pull guns on me that we fought with guns, and we physically fought them and took the guns from them. And I'm not saying you have to do that, but I'm saying there was there was a lot of different things that should have been done up until that point he shot him in the back of the head. And I just think it, he could have disengaged a couple of times and pulled the guy. If the guy came at him, you know, I, I'm backing away from you now. Look, I'm going to step back. Look here. You put my taser down, I'm going to shoot you. Or I tell you what, if you if you keep on doing the way you're going to do, I tell you what, I'm going to shoot you. Whatever. Talk to this guy, whatever. But you're fighting with this guy. You're struggling with him. You hold him down, back and forth, up and down and everything. Now you're back on top of him. And your last resort is to shoot him in the back of the head. Come on. So if, if 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 you had that much sense to put that gun to the back of his head, and this is crazy for me to say, but I'm just saying it, you could have put it to the shoulder blade. You could have put it to the shoulder. You could have found something that was less lethal to stop this guy. You could have popped him a couple of times in the leg. I mean, I understand if you fear of your life. But you said critical mass earlier. Critical mass, what do you mean? Like the leg, that's not critical mass. No, a center mass. No, I'm saying that that's on a, a okay. si- situation. We are taught to stop the threat. So we're taught not to kill, to shoot, to stop the threat. Do right? you think? You think that the officers should be charged because it went to the head? I think so. Okay. I think it went to the back of the head. You also I, think that the officer at many times there could have de-escalated this. Yes. You also know that the law says if you fear imminent injury Mm -hmm. that you have the right to take his life correct you've also said you feel the cop feels imminent threat yes so again we're just this is we're not in a court of law Mm -hmm. you think the man should be charged do you think the man will be acquitted if he was charged the officer no i think he's gonna have some problems i really do you do oh yeah i think he's gonna have some problems and again i want to stress to everybody this is just an expert who's been through stuff. You don't got to be hating or sending dirty notes. And that's fine. They Respect that. the man. He's just telling you from a, a real place. And we all live in a fantasy world. And I'm telling you from my humor perspective, not just a cop perspective. I get it. If that was my son, I would have wished that guy would have punched him in the face a couple of times and make him release that taser. Hit him with the pistol whip and make him release that taser. You know, step on his iron. Put your weight on his iron. They make him release that taser. It's my daughter, and I'm telling her, never put your fucking hands on the taser. Yes. So there's no question. Yes. See, I was speaking from a level of experience that this guy may not be privy to. That's another thing. You know, training is one thing, but experience helps to heighten that level of of training that you are armed with. And I don't know how long this guy was on the force. Um, You know. Seven years. Okay, there you go, right there, mm-hmm. and, and he was out by himself. Yes. That that doesn't that doesn't even sound well, right. Hey, hey you know, Grand Rapids got a brand new chief of police. I would rethink and take a look at what your police forces. This is when we went to the beginning of the show, and we're all talking, looking for boogeymen, and we want to blame everybody. You know more about Miguel Cabrera's lifetime batting record than you do about how many police you have on your force, what the budget is, who they are, what traffic stops look like. Why isn't that interesting to people? And why you got this one man car working all the time? We got these one man cars out here and I know it's about budget and everything else, but what about that human factor, that cop's life? Why are you why are you jeopardizing these cops' life by having them ride in one Do man? Do you cop? see what happens? Again, I get what Agreed. defund the police means. It means how about we get some money into alleviating pockets of poverty in this country? And yet, if you're gonna look at it from a law enforcement perspective, we gotta do the opposite. What we gotta find the money in is billionaires skyscrapers and little handouts and bullshit contracts. That's where the money's at. Um, you can't, let me you, ask you a question, Ira. Uh, some one of our one of our listeners was asking. You know, hey, Karen. Before that, wait, Karen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry what are our, what are our listeners thinking on this? What? 
Well, I mean, you know, people quick are quick to say, and sure. I understand, and that's one half of the story is to have the civilian comply. I get that. But there are tons of people who did comply or weren't in the position to comply that still ended up with the same outcome. Is there anybody, uh, excuse me, is there anybody in our community that's like agreeing with what I was saying, or is it just a bunch of people yelling comply? Well, most are saying comply, but they also are weighing in saying that the officer could have uh, diverted the so. situation. Because you a, know, a long and, time ago, that this used to be like a community of everybody. And I really hope that those from Detroit and Grand Rapids and Escanaba and uh, Imle City will stay with us too. Because it's not as easy as it can comply. But that, I think people, a lot of people, a lot of our listeners, they see the balance, you know. Good, and, and that's like, what I'm it, asking. That, Karen, that's what I'm asking. Because I'm Yeah, just, and I think people do. It is a balance. I mean, I don't think any Yes, I don't think that's it. I'm there with you balance. too. People I say, I say comply. But our brother over here is like, dude, it didn't have to end up that way. This is what we're trying to be. It's, it's. It's not a game show. We're trying so hard. To, this guy, can I get a close up here? Well, Ira, the, Ira, just look at him. It's not easy to find this man and ask him to speak honestly about his life and what he knows. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I honor you and thank you because I, I'm, I'm just was hoping, man, you're like an antidote to one or the other. And that the real life that you live is so murky that we're all afraid to live in that real world. We all want to live in TV world. It's not like that. Not the real world. So let's stop doing it. But again, I tell my daughter, put your hands up here. But people are there. thanking you for your service, Ira. They are. They are acknowledging that. But they're also, you know, you have to think about what people bring to their lives, whether it's a police officer. One of our listeners pointed out, you know, did this guy have PTSD from having served, you know, in the military? Did he have any other issues that are now, you know, convoluting his ability to respond in a, maybe a different demeanor? What Let me answer. You know, Not in having any issues. I mean, they're. Yeah, hey, oh, all right. Not important. We move on. We move on. We're not important. Well, we're not, now we're doing bullshit. Well, we, no, the, the it's military, not you're factors, Charlie. No, no, it's not. A, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing your game show. Well, there was a guy, a nom guy, and he, he lost his mind, and he sees people behind bushes. We're just looking at this. It's not you, Karen. It's uh, my friends, our community, the listeners, my mom. Fuck that. Let's focus. But you know, I think people are just, it's like they're trying to justify it in their mind. I know. E either way. But even with me. as and Thanks for it, Karen. I got to say it. For like, me to say that the officer should have been sh charged, that's hard for me to say. I know it I, is. Because I stand up for him. But something's got to be said about. I bet you get you, shit for that. I don't care. Because I tell you what, at the end of the day, we can't have officers shooting people in the back of the head oh. over minor what you, stuff what you, you just say say that again say that again the back of the head over minor here's stuff. a guy that shot a guy dad and got charged yes he said we can't have cops shooting guys over minor shit even if the guy's a shithead yes mm -hmm. and and to the point where you have to have some sort of experience one thing you can say about detroit we get so much crime so much crap all the time that you get experience and that experience, you start, you, you get this toolbox of experience in your head. You start seeing things instinctually. You'll know when things get ready to go down. You know when to de-escalate. The department teaches you at times you can de-escalate and then reassess the situation. It's okay sometimes. Because what if a crowd started coming out there? Let this guy go and back up and protect yourself too. But doesn't it go back to like you said in the beginning, Ira, that you have to assess because you have the ability to determine where you pull this person over. Yes. So you know, you talked about the neighborhood. What if people came out? I don't know what this neighborhood is like, but was this neighborhood pretend, potentially compromising to the situation of a single officer pulling over somebody with two people in the car for, you know, a, an expired plate? Yes. Yes. I'm going to do this. We have other stuff after this. Uh, the border 
Ukraine culture. No place for it. Executive decision right now. This show's done. I want you to give the last word about personal responsibility from the community. Oh, yeah. Okay, B, you agree with that, Karen? I think I will do this. I'm going to tell you, Mark, uh, we're going to play with Tara sent us from the Ukraine because he's out there in a the war zone doing what we asked him. Go do some work. But the rest of it I don't find to be important. I agree. After all, this, this is uh, unbelievable. You said when the um, the feed went down that I'm also sick of the public not responding appropriately to law enforcement. Go ahead, please. You know, we created this environment now. I don't know how it created, but it's been created for the last year or two where the officer can ask a, police, a person to do anything, and it's like they don't think they have to do anything. They they start asking the officer a barrage of questions. Well, why am I doing this? Or they snatching away, doing all that other kind of stuff. At the end of the day, you know, we created these laws. We created this authority for law enforcement to enforce these laws. You know, why isn't somebody talking to these citizens and say, hey, wait a minute, this is what we charge these guys responsibility to do, take care of you guys, to, to be the police. Okay, we we don't have the authority anymore. People are snatching away, doing things from us. But that don't give us the right to say, okay, well, you know, I'm a strong guy. You throw you to the ground, and I'm going to try to get you that way. And if I can't get you that way, I'll pull a bullet in the back of your head. There was too many times I think he could have disengaged. But who caused all of this? The guy that got out the car and did all of this. So he, the guy signed his own death warrant, and the cops should be charged for executing him. See, and that, that's, that's the tough part. I'm just saying, you asked me that I think personally. I think I heard what I heard today, that if it, if it was true and I was to boil it down, the I, guy brought it on himself and the cop should be charged for executing a guy because he did wrong. Cops should be charged, I think, because he shot him in the back of the head. I think at a couple of different points in that whole investigation, even in that whole struggle, there could have been some different decisions made. That's us Monday morning quarterbacking. Oh, that's we. Right, which is, I hate doing that because when you're in the mix, you don't know what was going through that cop's mind. But again, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but am I incorrect when I say if you really boiled this down, Patrick LaYoya brought this on himself and the officer should be charged with a murder? I think Patrick brought it on himself, okay? Mm -hmm. But do you think it came to that level where he brought his death to himself? So you agree with me? Right. Let me ask you this. Wait a minute, you know, Karen. Wait a minute. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. You agree with me then? Explain how, what am I agreeing with? The cop should be charged for his murder, and yet Layoya bought it on himself. Yes. I think the cop should be charged with his negligence. Negligence. Negligent homicide? Well, I don't know. You know, I, I'm, I'm not an attorney. I would think open murder, murder too. They would find some. It's okay, murder. so then it's like, according to Ira Todd, it's murder too. And you shouldn't have brought it on yourself. Well, I think he could have did things differently. You you see what I'm doing, and I'm I know. not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not Foxy I'm, Media. And, and I'm it's actually hard. real. It's hard media. for me to even say that. But the thing that gets me most, I'm telling you, if, that, if I'd have been in that situation, and I can't say what would have happened. Now I'm sitting back here, but just say if 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 I was could put myself in that situation, I would not have shot that guy in the head. I'd have pistol whipped him, punched him, shot him in the shoulder. I did this. Some I don't think I would have executed that guy on the ground. And I mean, He's using the word. I, yeah, he's let me tell you that that that's something hard, man. Dude, that is that's deep. That's something hard. And I gotta apologize, Karen. I I just needed to hear that. That's okay. What you were gonna I, ask? Yeah, if I wanted to ask because you know, as as a CPO holder, we're taught that you know you you have to your life has to be threatened in order to fire a weapon. Are those circumstances applicable for officers? Or, I mean, I know you said the whole goal is to de-escalate the threat, but at what point are you taught that it is justified to fire your weapon? And into somebody's head, in the I, back I, of his I head. Bet, I bet you as a CPO holder as well, mm -hmm. we're going to get away with it. I, I, there's more leeway for the the, the mm -hmm. public citizen, the private citizen, than the cop. I mean, let's, let's, let's do this. Two citizens are fighting just like they're fighting. Okay? They're not going to get charged. 
But well, you can't one got a gun. Oh, come on, man. One got a gun. Let's let's call the taser a gun. They uh, both guys got a gun. Well, that's different. Okay. Well, if you really get down to it, mm -hmm. okay. One guy's got a taser. One guy's got a gun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I bet that's you. I bet you the citizen don't get charged. That's not the same thing to me. No. That's not the same thing. And you couldn't shoot if, in fact, I, I get that. I get that. But the point I'm making is about the gun laws. And, if and, somebody and, and, and what, what, the, 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 the point I'm making is we've allowed everybody to have a gun and the responsibility for a private citizen is much less than what it is for the cop. And I agree it should be, Karen. But how ridiculous has shit gotten? Well, it's ridiculous. There's no question there. But if somebody does something to me, I have a weapon and they're walking away from me. I can't shoot them in the back. That, that didn't because happen here. Well, the guy was running away. So he, the cop he, tackled him. He tackled him. No, he, the shooting came when we're, our, when we're with, battling over a weapon. Battle. Yep. Now, I know, Karen, somebody's battling you over your gun, you're going to put one in them. You don't give a fuck where it goes. We expect more out of the police. What Ira's saying is, then we got to expect more out of the citizen. And I just think, even during that scuffle, even during that scuffle, I think he had a moment to think, do I put a bullet in this guy's head? I mean, I think it. People have been outraged. He to put a bullet through his shoulder, put a bullet through his back, put a bullet. They would have been outraged the same. But guess what? He wouldn't have taken that guy's life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and come in on. such an aggressive manner. That's yes. the other thing. That was very aggressive. Yes. You're seeing, you know, the gunfire, the powder. I mean, that 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 was that's that was a very aggressive. Um, encounter mark is over here looking well, like he's got to take a shit <laughs> well no i'm just no i'm, I'm just got thinking, something to say i'm thinking about it all and, and i really appreciate ira's opinion because of his past and his history but also because he's not a talking head on cable news uh you're not a political person you're not running for any office so you are seeing it way more objectively than those people he will be charged because of those things it's just that's how big it's gotten um, whether, whether it's probably wrong, that's the wrong reason to charge him, but, but it's going to happen. But I kind of feel like you set up his defense by mm -hmm. saying, I would have uh pistol whipped him. I would have put it in his shoulder. It kind of makes me feel like it is accidental because do you feel like other officers are thinking like you, like that's what they would have done and, and, and that's, that it that's, went off. And that's a couple of days later. Now, You're not, if you in the mix, I, who knows if I've got that nervous and scared, I might've put a bullet in it. I don't think you know? I heard from you that it was accidental. Well, you said no, you, you I didn't see, think oh, Wait, Mark. I told, when I did Alan's show, I was telling Alan, if you, I watched the video. If what you, show? Who's show? <laughs> Who's Alan, 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 Alan Langle, Deadline Detroit. Oh, oh, okay, Deadline okay, De right, fine. My boys at Deadline Detroit, oh, yeah. <laughs> stealing my shit. Okay, Mr. Detroit News. No, but I tell you, really, if you really watch the tape, I really believe, and I'm just talking from an old school cop, and I've done this too. Don't hey, I'm, I'm gonna be real about this. But if somebody don't want to comply and they fighting you so hard, I stuck a gun to somebody. I tell you, you don't drop it, I blow you your head off. You what? You you put stuck a gun? To, oh, I stuck guns. Oh, I done stuck guns to heads. I done did all that. I'm mm. telling you, let's be real. Yeah, the we, police gonna do what they need to do to live. It's no bullshit sure. news. Yes, but I mean, at some point, I'm sure he put the gun to his head. It was like drop it, drop it, and it's gonna be like a thing. But if you watch this boy, this man or whatever, started pushing up, and he, when he pushed him down, the gun went off. And if you look at that. And when you look, when he went uh, down, I bet you it was an accidental shooting. Let's be honest, you're from another era, but it's not legal for a cop to put a gun in your head. No. Let me, can, no. Let me ask one more it question. Legal, it wasn't legal for us to bust him in the head. But let me tell you something. When we were more physical in, in policing, and that's not right. Don't get me wrong now, but we were taught to rule with iron fists. When I worked gang squad, we fought more guys with our fists who had weapons. And see, back then, we wasn't afraid of weapons or people like it seemed like they are now. And I think what's the problem in the back of cops' mind, they don't know what to do. The public got them so confused. I don't know where to grab this guy too hard. It might have been why the guy got away. I don't know where to grab him, just slam him on the ground, because that guy would have been resisting me. I'd have grabbed him and slammed him on the ground. Mm. But they don't know what to do now. Do you punch him in the face? We just could get physical and get into a physical fight with these guys, and then you didn't have to use your weapons. But nowadays, people are videotaping you so much, you punch them. Oh, my God, I can't believe he punched them like that. What do you guys want cops to do? What, what do we ask, need to do? Ira, yeah. can I ask you this? Because um, one of our listeners, John, has pointed out repeatedly that had this officer failed to take control of the situation or had been uh, out subdued by the guy that he pulled over, that he would have been ridiculed by the other officers back at the precinct. Is that can something I else? 
that may fuel things that, you know, hey, you know, this guy got the best of you. Can I, uh, it can, beca- can it I becomes answer? a struggle between you and the civilian. Can I answer? Yes. Boo fucking who? Boo fucking who? But no, what she, but, but what she, I know, but no, 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 I, I got it. I got the point. But, but real, the answer is boo fucking who? But it still goes back to that human thing. You know what? I, even this. You snatch away from me? How dare you snatch? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fight you. I'm the police. You, you let me. I'm gonna put you in the cuffs. Yeah, but you know the question was: You go back to the priest, like, and it's on the video, and like, uh, look at you, pussy. Okay, then that's the deal now. Oh, yeah. Then that's the deal. It ain't the '80s. This is what we're asking. What's the guy's name? Brian. John. John, it's cool, dude. Great question. Mm-hmm. What? society at large is doing within the context of what Iris said, cops don't know what to do. Part of it's gotta be, fuck it if the boy's back at the precinct gonna laugh at you. There ain't no dead dude and you ain't hiding worried about your family. But that's a different level of mental maturity Uh, that may not be present. Let me say this, let me say this. I hope you respected, and it's a weird word, but enjoyed the honesty of a, of a real cop who been really through it. We're, we're trying, we're trying hard to bring you the stuff that might help. Much honor to you, man. I appreciate you. And I want to say this. Our man, Taurus Petro, you know, our, our guy from Hamtramck, the <laughs> supposed priest or whatever, we gave him a hard time, but he's out there. You always got a second chance on this show. You make a mistake, you apologize, you move on. You always got a place with us. He's out there now in the Ukraine being your correspondent. This is, we're going to leave it with this. Footage the very morning that after the Russians shelled Lviv where all the Ukrainians have gone for hopefully some shelter and some food and the Russians have decided they're going to start launching missiles in there. Here's a one-minute report, original stuff from Taurus. Much respect to him. <laughs> um, Karen? Yes. My whole uh, view of this thing's kind of changed after today. This was spectacular, un- unbelievable, really open, and I think what America can and should be. I'm very, very proud of what went on here today. That is candid discussion that is respectful and that's open. That's what this is supposed to be. I mean, we don't come in here telling people what to think um, or how to think, but, you know, hey, be open to a different perspective. Um, and and maybe this is how we get through this. I mean, we we clearly don't know. So we might as well be receptive to a different of a difference of opinion or a difference of perspective. And let's see how we come out. And can I just say one last thing? Yeah, that was just going right there. Okay. It's yours. Think about this. The laws say what a reasonable officer would do. Was that reasonable what he did? If you think it's reasonable, then he won't be charged. But if was it reasonable for him to stick a gun to the back of this guy's head, and and he still had a little control over this guy, a little bit of power over this guy, but to stick a gun to the back of his head and execute him, kill him, because you know he said the guy that used to do it, and only by the grace of a hiccup, mm -hmm. you didn't get tagged with that one either. Right. And that's what I'm saying. That's I, why it's deep. I don't want to. I don't want to burn bread on this man and hope he get. I don't hope he get charged. But I'm just saying. I'm just looking at it from my perspective as a cop, as a human being, as an old broke down old cop that's retired now. That's not fight, old. that well fighting cancer, and I'm. Just, I think differently about life. You think God gave you cancer because you took an unarmed man's life? I just really believe that you do, don't you? You, you have some karma like that. Yeah, yeah you yeah. believe that. Oh yeah, I believe I, some of my I, life. I think that's shit. important. Yeah. So I just think. Once you go through things and once you live long enough, you realize just how precious life is. And to take somebody's life for something like that, even though he's fighting him, I'm telling you, there could have been other things I think that could have been done. But I'm only money quarterbacking. I mean, I might have been did the same thing. I wouldn't have did it in his head. But I may have shot him in the shoulder or something like that. And I'm not saying officers got to point and try to shoot a gun out of somebody's hand or shoot a taser out of somebody. That's unreasonable. But all I'm saying is, you got to consider that we are policing real human beings out here, real people who's going to make some bad decisions. And some of those bad decisions shouldn't cost them their life just because we have the right to do it. And I want to let everybody know what you have here. When we started out with the American man is we have one that you've uh, attained 
the title of elder. I appreciate that. I feel chieftain, it. the sachem of wisdom. And we, we thank you. I really do, man. I, I, I thank you for doing this today. I appreciate mm -hmm. you. And I, and I hope you all rewatch it and, you know, whatever, blah, 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 blah. You can find it in blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with that, uh, here's a report from Taras uh, Petro uh, from the Ukraine this week. We are live at the place that was attacked this morning by Russian missile uh, attack. This is one of the four missiles that, uh, that hit Lviv. Uh, Forty cars were damaged in the process of this uh, um, uh, tire repair shop or auto tech center being hit and now they are as you can see they are trying to deal with the wreckage that was uh, destroyed this morning at uh, before before sunrise live from Ukraine from Lviv Ukraine and we don't know if police are on the scene we can't tell all we see is the workers now trying to go through the rubble to see if anybody else is hurt injured or well uh deceased peace on earth and if man won't leave you in peace you have a right till next week